all I ever heard was a starting artist. I never heard emerging artists. And I never knew an artist who was creating possibilities and living life based on their artwork. My name is Demarcus McGoy. I'm an international visual artist. I'm a freelance graphic designer, and I'm a certified life coach focusing on brand coaching. My art is colorful, it's vibrant, it has texture to it, and it has size to it. Originally, I started painting bold colors because I wanted you to, to see my paintings. I wanted you to notice them. In March, I remember losing my studio due to the pandemic and the business closing down. I remember moving everything out, not knowing what was next. Where was I gonna paint? Where was I gonna create? How the year was even gonna go? I flew home and instead of shipping all of my work from New York to Texas, I ended up going home to create a whole new body of work called Culture. Talking about the black culture and the things that I grew up on, the culture that influenced me growing up while I was in Texas. And we ended up having my first solo exhibition at home in Dallas. My first time going to Governor's Island was in 2019. And I remember standing in front of one of the homes saying, one day I will be an artist in resident on Governor's Island, not knowing that it was gonna be this year. My artist in residency program was possible because of an organization called Art Crawl Harlem. I was selected to create works around the theme of boundaries and connections, the other side of us and celebrating 100 years of Harlem. So being on Governor's Island, I had to think about what did boundaries and connections mean to me pertaining to Harlem, and then how was I going to celebrate 100 years of Harlem through my paintings. My process through the journey of creating these pieces was I vetted out people who lived in Harlem, and I wanted to know who migrated to Harlem. And I wanted to know, like, what was your experience or your relationship to Harlem? What gravitated you there? What was your love and your hate for it? Describe Harlem to me, like, on a good day and on a bad day. I have this mantra, this thing that I say as a life coach, create your life. And painting the people who migrated to Harlem, I felt like it was similar to the Harlem Renaissance. During the Harlem Renaissance in the 1920s, there was a pandemic going on and there was art that was created. There were all these black people that moved to this location and there was this surge, a burst of energy, of creative talent within Harlem. Those were people who created their life. They left a place of comfort and moved to a new place to create a new life for themselves, a new opportunity for themselves, for their family, and for their future, and for their legacy. I kind of wanted to recreate that in a modern day time. And so the people that I painted on Governor's Island, to me, they created their life as well. Becoming a life coach has been a very rewarding journey. I was approached by a friend that suggested for me to be certified as a life coach. And I thought, no, nah, I don't think I want to do that. I'm good with painting. I didn't really realize my self-worth or the lives that I was impacting at the time. Every single person has a gift. And one of my vision for the world is to activate everyone's spiritual gifts. And so through brand coaching, I'm able to do that. I'm able to support them with their ideas and their concepts within the products and the services that they want to put out into the world. So this one, that's my, my best friend, Tafik Muhammad. He was an artist too. He's kind of what got me to start painting. My best friend, oh man, his name is um, Tafik Muhammad. Tafik. Ah, man, he, he was this fun guy, like, um, hmm. 
He was just this fun guy. He made life very interesting for me. But he was an amazing artist, and he was what I would consider my first accountability partner. The way that he could just create, I knew that I was a good artist, but he was an even better artist. And in so many ways, I felt like he leveled me up, and I felt like I leveled him up. Because back then, all I, all I ever heard was a starting artist. I never heard emerging artists, and I never knew an artist who was creating possibilities and living life based on their artwork. So it wasn't until I moved to New York that I, I, I got to see the other side of art and how artists are treated. Tafik ended up passing away five years ago from a heart condition and it rocked my world. Um, but I feel like it also empowered me. I feel like it also gave me permission to paint. And um, there's so many conversations that I remember that he and I had of so many different things that he wanted to do in life as an artist. And I originally started painting because he couldn't do those things anymore. And I started painting for therapy for myself in mourning of him. And I will remember all the things that he taught me or watching him paint. And I remember him going to another university to finish his degree. That his professor told him, Tafik, you're an amazing artist, but you should paint what you know. Paint what you see, paint your life. And his paintings started to shift. Instead of painting icons and movie stars and rappers, he started to paint jazz musicians that he saw in Louisiana. It's and I use it in my art now. It's I paint my life. The subjects that I paint, they're all people that I know. I paint the stories that they tell me. I feel like all the opportunities that I have are because he's my, He's my guardian angel. Yeah, I feel like I get to travel around the world and to show my art because he couldn't. The funny thing was I was talking to his niece one day, maybe like a month ago, and I thought like, oh man, am I being lame because I keep talking about him? He like, like, should I like stop? And she was like, no, DeMarcus, like you're keeping his legacy alive, you know? Like he has, Oh my God, he has so much art. And it's, I just pray for the day that the world gets to like see his work. What I always tell people is our ideas and our visions, they're tied into someone else's life. They're tied into someone else's dreams. You're meant to impact the world. I believe we'll be okay. I truly believe that wholeheartedly that we'll be okay because we're creators. That's what we do. We create. We turn something into nothing. We entertain. We inspire. We allow people to think. We allow people to communicate. We allow people to have conversations. Like, this is what we were put on this earth to do. I don't know what's the future for artists. All I can say is this year, there was a movement. There was like a burst of energy, like there was a wave going and people were paying attention to art and people were creating new art. People started to pay attention to black art and black artists and people were getting recognition. And we've always been dope. We've always had that. But there was the opportunity for a wider audience and a wider platform there were more people becoming allies. I want to paint my life. I want to paint the people that I know. I want to paint the experiences that I've lived, ultimately leaving a legacy and a bunch of different love letters. Each painting is a love letter to people that I know. The love letters to the world. Like we've lost so many different people this year and you are still here. It is your responsibility to create that piece of art 
It's your responsibility to create that movie. It's your responsibility to create that new product or that new service that is going to empower the world or impact the community. I dare you to do it. I dare you to create that product. I dare you to create that next painting. I dare you to create that next story. I dare you to change the world.